My name is Paul Connett. I'm a retired professor of chemistry and I've been fighting fluoridation now for 18 years and written a book about it. Now, here are the 10 top things that you need to know about fluoride. Number one, the level of fluoride in mother's milk, which gives you some idea of the safety of fluoride for a baby, is 0.004 parts per million. In other words, the baby gets very little. It looks as if mother's milk protects the baby. We're taking that protection away once we put fluoride in the water. Secondly, to use the public water supply to deliver medicine is a very bad idea because you can't control the dose, you can't control who gets the medicine, and it violates the individual's right to informed consent. Point three, our kids today are getting far too much fluoride. The rate of dental fluorosis. In the beginning, they thought about 10% of the kids would get this mottling, discoloration of the teeth. Now in America, it's up to 41% of all children 12 to 15 have this condition. Point number four, uh, fluoride accumulates in the bones. And the first symptoms are just like arthritis. We have millions of people today with arthritis, but no one has checked to see if this could be related to how long they've been drinking fluoridated water. And if you continue to take the fluoride, it makes the bones more brittle. We're concerned about increased hip fractures in the elderly. Point number five, fluoride seems to interfere with the thyroid gland. Doctors used to use fluoride tablets in the 1930s, 40s and 50s in Argentina, France and Germany to lower thyroid function of patients with hypothyroidism. And today we have millions of people and it's increasing with hypothyroidism, with one of the key factors being chronic fatigue, uh, tiredness not relieved by sleep. Point number six is fluoride's impact on the brain. This is the issue that concerns me, me most, and I've been following this since 1996 when I first got involved. We now have over a hundred animal experiments which shows that fluoride can enter the brain, interfere with various aspects of, of brain chemistry. We have another 30 animal experiments, learning experiments, where they put animals in mazes and they teach them how to find a piece of cheese or whatever, rats and mice. And it turns out that the animals treated with fluoride are less uh, capable of memory and, and learning than the rats not exposed to, to, to fluoride. And that's very significant and, and supports this notion that 41 studies have found uh, a lower IQ in children in high fluoride villages compared to low fluoride villages. In most cases, the high fluoride was in, in the water. And 27 of those studies were reviewed by a team from Harvard, Choi and others in 2012. And in the 27 studies that they reviewed, they found that 26 had a lowering of IQ and uh, the average lowering was seven IQ points, which is highly substantial. So, I mean, what parents in their right mind and what government in their right mind would put a, a reduction in a small amount of tooth decay, which can be achieved uh, topically and is achieved topically in many other countries uh, above protecting your child's mental development. Point number seven, the fluoride that they use for fluoridating the water is not the pharmaceutical grade fluoride that you have in toothpaste and other dental products, but a hazardous waste product of the phosphate fertilizer industry. Point number eight is that most countries don't do this. Ireland is the exception in the rule. 97% of Europe does not fluoridate its water. Year nine is according to the World Health Organization data, and they track tooth decay in 12 year olds. There's no difference in the rate with which tooth decay is coming down in Europe, whether the countries the 12 year old is grown up in a non fluoridated or a fluoridated country. And the rates of tooth decay in 12 year olds today, there's no difference between whether that 12 year old comes from a fluoridated or non fluoridated country. And point number 10. Uh, we shouldn't be forcing this practice on people that don't want it, especially now that they've admitted that fluoride works topically. In 1999, the Center for Disease Control, or rather the Oral Health Division of that CDC, said that the predominant benefit of fluoride was topical, not systemic. In other words, it works on the outside of the teeth, not from inside the body. So there really is no need to swallow it. A much more sensible thing to do, if you want fluoride, and I don't, is to brush it on your teeth and spit it out. This way you get reach the target organ and minimize the exposure to all the other tissues in the body, including the brain and the bone and the thyroid gland and so on. 
and it also avoids forcing it on people that don't want it.